pirates. When a newspaper strip as popular as Terry and the Pirates leaps from the nation's newspapers and becomes a transcribed radio show, Terry fans everywhere are quick to be critical of these characters they have come to know and love. And we are happy to report that letters from young and old alike are unanimous in saying that the voices and adventures of this radio program are exactly what they expected and what they want. And we're here to guarantee that we'll never let you down. Terry and the Pirates is brought to you by the makers of Libby's Tomato Juice, one of Libby's hundred famous foods. If you were going to get a super football team together, you'd naturally sign up all the stars. Well, it's the same way when a company like Libby's makes an all-star juice drink, one that scores heavy with everybody's tasters. Libby picks the stars. And in the case of Libby's super extra swell tomato juice, that's the exact story. Only juice from prized tomatoes, ripened on the vine, real stars of the garden are used. And to give that prized garden fresh juice the extra care it deserves, Libby carefully cans it pronto, so none of that rich-tasting, mouth-watering flavor escapes. Boy, oh boy, my tongue's practically hanging out for a glass full right now. I wish I were home like you boys and girls are. I'd make a beeline to the refrigerator and help myself to a big glass of Libby's tomato juice. It's so doggone good and good for you. It gives you important vitamins. For instance, Libby's tomato juice is rich in vitamin C. It's also a swell source of vitamin A. And that's not all. Libby's tomato juice also contains vitamins B1 and C. So make sure you've always got some of this grand-tasting juice in the icebox. It's a pepper-upper the whole family will go for. Just be certain Mother asks for Libby's tomato juice. L-I-B-B-Y-S. Libby's. And now, Harry and the Pirates. Big stoop to the rescue. The huge, silent Chinese servant of Terry and Pat Ryan has freed these two troubleshooters from the room in the stone house in Utong, hideout of the dragon lady. All this happened during a storm which muffled the noise of breaking down the door to Terry and Pat's cell. Then, leaving Big Stoop upstairs, Terry and Pat hurried down to the room below to seize the portable radio transmitter, the invention they came to recover from the dragon lady. But the invention was not to be found. As they stood undecidedly in the darkness, a flash of lightning lit up the window. They saw a man there, fumbling with the latch. And so they crouched in the shadows and waited. And as they wait, let's join April Kane and the beautiful Burma, who are locked in a room adjoining the one recently occupied by Terry and Pat. There's where the cotton and the corn and potatoes grow. Carry me back. Hey, April, it's carry me back, not carry me back. Oh, that's right, it is, isn't it? Carry me back. You have to sing all the time, April. I... Oh, I'm sorry, but I wish I knew what was going on. I'm just seeing to keep from getting scared, Burma. I oh, know, I know. It's like whistling when you walk by a graveyard. That's a terrible bad storm. And then all that racket out in the hall. Sounds like somebody broke in the door to Terry's and Pat's room. Hey, did you try calling to them through the crack in the wall? Yeah, but nobody answered. I was going to ask Terry what to do with this thing. What thing? Oh, oh, that. Hey, what is it? I don't know exactly, but I've been working with it, and I think it's the thing to see around corners with. See around corners? Now, look, let's not all go crazy. How can you see around corners with a cardboard tube? Well, we have many corners to look around in this room. But if I put my eye to this hole here and keep looking, well, I can look up and out above my head. Hey, is this the thing Terry invented? Yeah. He shoved it through this crack in the wall about an hour ago. Remember? Guess he wanted me to keep it here for him. Oh, what did he say? Nothing. This thing was just pushed through the crack in the wall, and, well, here it is. Now, well, let's see it. Now, look. You see, there's two mirrors in it, one at each end, and you look through this end. Uh-huh, I see. And the look comes out the other end. Yeah, it's like a periscope or something, only it isn't. Well, you can bet Terry has a name for it. That lad can build the strangest thing. Say, maybe we better pass this thing along to Dude Hennick and Connie. 
Maybe they can find some use for it. All right, we can try. There's a crack in this wall. Let's try. Then we can tell them what it is and perhaps. Well, Tommy, storm's over outside, but from the racket we heard out in the corridor, I'd say some sort of a storm happened in this building. Oh, too true, Mr. Doodle. Oh, look, I'm not fussy about my name, but it isn't Mr. Doodle. Call me dude, call me Hennig. Bless best if you want to just point at me, but don't call me Mr. Doodle. A uh, thousand pardons, Mr. Doodle. Uh, Mr. Hendrix, sir. Ho, ho. Okay, let it go. A uh, mystery bang noise outside the hall. Is big stupa, perhaps. Big stoop? You mean he's in this building? He's out of... So how do you know? A uh, footy steps go frop, frop. And I come stupor walking. Oh, sounded like a big fellow, huh? Or uh, perhaps we. Well, then what was he doing up here? I heard a pounding. Hey, maybe he battered down the door of the room where Pat and Terry are. Yeah, but why didn't they release us and April and Burma in the next room? Can we make talk through wall cracker? Missy April explain, perhaps we. Well, go ahead. I don't get all this banging about all night long. Hello. Is Connie here for chatter, Missy April? Is that you, Connie? Are uh, you so say? Hey, listen, I'm pushing something through the wall crack, way up here. Tell Mr. Hennick it's a periscope Terry made. Hey, what's that she said? A push wall crack through petticoat for Terry. Oh, look out, let me talk. Hello, April. What's that you say? Here it comes. I'm sliding it through. Can you see it, Mr. Hennick? What? Hey, what's she talking about? Oh, here comes petticoat through cracking. Oh, this is what for, I don't know, Mr. Dudu. Oh, let's see. Hmm. Very clever. Very clever. It's a periscope. Mirrors at both ends. Say, this is very kippy. How it shoot boom bullets? Ah, uh, it doesn't shoot boom bullets. It's a thing you look at. Oh. Say, this is just the thing to look out into the corridor with. Yeah, if I could get up there by that window and... Of a postage stamp. Are uh, Mr. Doodle, sir, like to step stand on Connie's shoulders? No, I'm too heavy to stand on your shoulders, Connie, but you could stand on mine. Okay, Kate. Uh, the first. Now, this is how you work this periscope. You stick the tube out through the window. That on? Yes. Now, this end goes out. Then you look through this end, like this. Hey, that's all right. Now, then you can see what goes on out in the corridor. You can't? Connie experience very smart with petticoat. All right. I'll brace myself against the wall. Now then. Alley up. Right oh. Okay, up there. Oh, and Kate, a little shaky enough, but hot be dandy now. Well, get busy with that gadget and see if you can see anything. Well, what luck? Nothing but darkness outside. Yeah, just our luck. Hey, hey, wait. Stay up there. Steady now. I'll hand you this wild lantern. Steady. I can reach it. All right. Come on, grab it. Ah, uh, you got the periscope stuck out in the hall? It is so. And then hold the lantern in front of the mirror. Move the lantern up and down. The light will be reflected out in the hall and it may attract attention. Big stoop is still out there. Maybe we... Loosen. Here coming footsteps. Oh, she is stupa or hopsy dandy. Yeah, those footsteps sound like an elephant. Ah, uh, hello, stupa. You hear Connie say, get the spy gari outside. You hear, Stupa? Knock on door or break in, such thing. Huh? Guess he can't hear us. No. He's so far, so grocery. Okay, come on down. <coughs> Say, Connie, can Big Stoop read? Maybe we can slip him a note. Oh, yes. Big Stoop read crazy way. He read only Chinese code. Oh, that's fine. He reads only Chinese code. That's no help. Oh, no, Mr. Duder. Perhaps the Connie right paper talk to Stupa. Yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. Here, take this paper. That's all we have in the place. Got a pencil? Oh, too bad, no. About this little stick will help much, Rick. Really. All right, write something. Tell Stoop to get the girls out and then get us out. Or... Ah, just tell them we're locked in here. Oh, can do. Huh. Hey, what in the name of Lavender Cows is that? Lavender Cows, that is Chinese court. Pretty sweater, I guess so. Hey, do you mean to say those funny squares spell out words? It is so. A special Chinese code? Say, well, wonders never cease. Wonder cease now. Kami or finish paper talk. Yeah, what would you write with all those secret chicken tracks? Oh, Kami say, come inside, please, before dawn hour. Come inside before dawn hour. Okay. 
Well, then, hop up on my shoulders and slip that message outside, and let's see what happens. Okay. okay. Show that paper out in the hall. She go outside to big stoop. Uh, now we make listen see. Stupa in darkness can't read the paper talk. Well, that's right. It's too dark out there. Yeah, I guess he got it all right. Now he's gone down before the law. Made enough noise to frighten that storm away. Can Stupa look for right? Well, I hope he finds one. Hey, Connie. Where did you learn how to write Chinese code? Mr. Terry, sir, has shown how can do very easy, I explained. Terry? You mean that Chinese code isn't Chinese at all? It's another thing Terry has invented? It is so said, Mr. Duda. Oh, for a thousand pardons. Mr. Hendrick. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, that lad Terry is quite an actor doing things. So he taught the big boy to read a special secret code, huh? Huh. Bless the... Say, I wonder how Stoop got in here. How did he get by the guard? It is so said in the book of... Uh, uh, never mind. I'm, I'm sorry I asked. Well, we may as well relax. We can't do anything until we hear from Stoop or Pat or Terry or the dragon lady. Who's there? Speak up. Speak up or I'll shoot. Oh, is, is that you, Stoop? Oh, yeah, I can make you out now. Whew. Thought at first it might have been somebody else. Golly, things have been happening tonight, huh? <laughs> Just a few minutes ago, me and Pat saw somebody outside that window, a man trying to get in. He didn't have any luck, so he slipped away. He must have gone around to look in another window or a door. Pat's going to take a look. Doesn't seem to be anybody down here. Well, what's on your mind, Stoop? <laughs> what's this, a message of some sort? Golly, I wish you could talk. Wait, I'll try and find a quick light. Be a candle or a lantern or something. Even a match will do. Well, I ought not to make a light. It might attract attention. No, we'd better wait until Pat returns. He ought to be back pretty soon. And... It's Pat. He's in trouble or something. Come on, Stoop. Let's get going. This way. He's down here somewhere and he's run into someone. Well, this young American Terry Lee can pack a lot of excitement into an evening, huh? But if he only knew, this is only a starter for what's on the way. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Say, for instance, you were here in the studio right now, and say I tossed a coin to see whether you got Libby's tomato juice or Libby's pineapple juice. It wouldn't matter much either way. You'd be a winner, sure. As an example of Libby's way of assuring you a wonderful, super delicious drink, let's take Libby's tomato juice. Pressed from prize tomatoes. Carefully canned quick, Libby guards the garden fresh flavor. No wonder Libby's is rich in vitamins. Tell Mother you want Libby's tomato juice and Libby's pineapple juice often. Well, that trick Terry's scope or periscope has already played a big part in this adventure. Yes, and so has that strange Chinese code which Terry devised. But tomorrow and the next day, we'll see even more action with this odd little invention. So stick close to the radio for your next transcribed program at this same time. And uh, you know how it starts. Well, if you don't, well then listen to this. <laughs> 